Okay, now that we have data grip working, let's go ahead and uh, look at some features. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this data source. And right now, there's not a lot of information about the names database or the server. Um, but I can change a few settings and get access to a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the settings for the database. Let me show you that one more time. So I have this selected and I click on settings. And I uh, filled out the general tab. I can edit any of this information if I want. Um, I'm going to go to schemas. And I'm going to click on this box for current database names and say OK. And you'll see this changed a little bit. Now it's showing 1 of 13, and I have a little arrow next to here. If I click on that to open it, that shows me the database with a DBO thing. And then four tables, one view, and seven routines. So I'm going to open the tables. So this is showing me that there are four tables in the names database. Name counts, names, sys diagrams you can ignore for now. That's just a, um, an entity relationship diagram. And then your gender totals. So this all data here, that's actually a view. But we'll get to that in a second. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write select top 50 star from name under counts. And you'll notice that it's doing autocomplete here. It's actually pretty good about doing autocomplete. But for this to work correctly, you have to have the database selected to match the database that you're doing the query in. So this names database has to match names at server for this to work. And you can switch in your SQL file between using different databases. If you're doing that and you're doing development, you need to also switch the source if you want autocomplete to work correctly. So we'll see that in a minute. So now I have two queries in here. I'm going to position the cursor on that one and hit run. It's actually execute. And I'm just going to execute that query. And here I get a new data grid popping up with the results. So this is what the name counts table looks like. It's got ID, and I can resize this, rank, name count, FK name ID, FK your gender total ID. And if I look at the name counts table by opening this thing up, I see a list of columns in that table. So I see ID, which is a numeric value, seven wide. I see rank, which is numeric five wide, name count, FK name ID, year gender total ID. And then there's a primary key ID field. Um, these are constraints, and we'll talk about that later in the course. These things with the keys, and then these things with the I's are indexes, and we'll talk about that later on as well. So these are the actual columns. And that's what I get when I run the select statement. Now I can do the same thing with the other tables. If I want to see what's in the names table, I can open that up. And I see that has three columns. It's got a numeric value, something called a varchar that's 100 wide, and something else called a var, that, which is a varchar, which is 100 wide. So varchar means ba basically variable length string up to 100 characters. And this is in a column called name. This one is in a column called metaphone. So I can run that query as well. Select top 50 star from names. And you'll see, once again, I get the autocomplete. And then I'm going to just execute on that query. And here are the first 50 lines from the name table, names table. OK. Now, if I have multiple queries in a file, I can also execute all of the queries. And what happens then is I get back three result sets. So here's the first query, which is um, top 50 rows from all data. Here's the second query, which is top 50 from name counts. And here's the third query, which is top 50 from names. Now, when I hit the execute button, it's asking me whether I want to run just this query or the whole thing. But I can also just select a range and hit execute. And it will just execute whatever I have selected without asking me again. So let me go ahead and close these windows, or these tabs, I guess. 
And then what if I want to use another database? So let's use the IMDB database here. Use IMDB. And then I don't have a data source here, but I can still write a query. Now the IMDB database also has an all data view. So I'm going to select top 50 star from all data. And if I just execute this one query by itself, I get back the all data table from the names database because this connection, the last use statement I executed was this one when I ran it before. And so that's sticky. It's in the names database right now. And when I try to do the fetch, it's fetching stuff from the names database. If I hit this drop down and switch that to IMDB and hit run, I get invalid object name all data. So it's actually, actually I was wrong. There is no all data view in the IMDB database, but there is one called um, name basics. So let's go ahead and try it now. And that works. So if I switch IMDB and I execute this query, it's going to work with IMDB. But now if I try to execute this, names, it doesn't work because names is a table in the names database, not in the IMDB database. Now I could manually switch this back to names like I did before, but I can also just execute this use statement. If I execute the use statement, See, that automatically switches to the names database. And so now if I execute the query, it's going to work correctly. Now I can also execute once again the whole thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit run and select this whole thing here. And I get back four sets of results now, three from the names database and the new one from IMDB database. So pretty easy to switch. But let's look at autocomplete. So select top 50 star from, and you'll see that it's offering me all data, names, name counts, cis diagrams, and your gender totals, which are all from the names database. So even though I'm here in this use IMDB context, it's still looking at the data source in order to determine how to do the autocomplete auto suggest. And this is not what I want. I actually want IMDB data. So how do I deal with that? Well, one way of dealing with it is to add another data source. So I'm going to go ahead and hit plus. I'm going to add a new data source, SQL Server. Same exact information as before, cisdbss.pcc.edu. This time though, the database is IMDB. Username 275 student, password 275 student. And then under schemas, I'm going to actually I have to connect first. So let me go ahead and say OK. So now I have an IMDB. I'm going to go ahead and select it and click on the schema properties. Select current database. Say OK. And then I can open this up and I can see tables and I see there's name basics, name known for titles, name profession, and so on. So these are all tables. And then there's no views, but there is one routine. I can open name basics and I see here are the columns in the name basics table and then some, some key values and some indexes, which we'll talk about later. So now, back here, I'm still in, um, actually, I'm still in the names database. So if I'm trying to do autocomplete from, now it's not giving me anything at all, not making any suggestions. But I can actually switch my data source here. So let's switch to IMDB and select IMDB. 
And let's see what happens now. Yeah, so now I'm getting auto suggest, auto complete is suggesting all of the IMDB tables, but not the names ones. So if I go back here, so I'm under names, use names, and I say select top 50 star from, now I'm getting still the IMDB stuff, but I can switch to names. And actually, I don't think I have to switch to the database. So let's do, yeah, so now I'm getting names, suggestions. So we'll su select from your gender totals here. And then when we're working in the IMDB database, let's go ahead and switch to IMDB data source. And then let's do title basics, like so. And by the way, I'm using just selecting, moving up and down with the arrows, and then I hit return when I have the one that I want. So let's go ahead and run this whole thing now. And I get back one, two, three, four, five, six result sets. Two, three, four, five, six. So first four are from names. And then the second two are from IMDB. So that should be everything you need to get started with data grip. It's a little bit complex. There's a lot of stuff here, a lot of moving parts, but most of them you don't really need to be successful in this class. And there's a lot of online documentation as well, if there are any features you're interested in. And we'll be seeing some more things you can do with the interface later on in the course.